He gets transported to an entirely different world alone, where he is forced to fight with monsters and goblins to survive each day. Nothing changes though as even back in his own world Haru was a total lonely loser with no bitches and a future darker than my black hole. No one ever paid attention to this dipshit, because he never fit in with any of the class groups which were divided into the group of nasty delinquents. The school hoes, the Sigma Sam Sulek followers, the disgusting sweaty nerds and finally the good girls with a stick up their ass. He puts his head on the desk again, knowing that there is no place for a dork like him in this world. When suddenly all the classmates start acting like great idiots as they stare at a golden glowing circle emerging in the classroom. Since Haru is a dweeb just like you all, he has already read all the mangas and knows that they are going to get transported to another world. But it's too much work for him. So he decides to bail and literally tries to walk away from the situation. Unfortunately, the door is shut tightly by flex seal so even with a lot of damage, he can't break the door to escape. Soon the magic circle covers the entire classroom and slowly the students start getting sucked in. But Haru has watched way too many Mission Impossible movies and he jumps up the air duct to escape. Luck is not on his side, though as the circle enters the air duct and sucks him into a white endless void, he looks around wondering where the hell is his entire class and waits for an ugly ass king with a smoking hot daughter to greet him. But nothing happens. He soon spots an old fuck running towards him and trying to interact in sign language for some reason. Somehow Haru manages to understand the old ass man as he realizes that all his classmates were summoned before him and were transported to a different world after choosing a special skill. The old man tells him to follow him as he needs to choose a skill as well. But out of 50 skills, 43 have been already chosen so there are no cheat skills available anymore. He realizes that he will have to take a lame ass skill and somehow survive in the new world. But his hopes and dreams shatter once again when he notices that a jellyfish has better skills than the ones remaining for him, and starts shaking the old man like a maraca. He shouts at the old man to stock up with better skills or learn how to count better than and not summon more people if he doesn't have enough skills. The old man ends up snapping and pushes him away, claiming that a person like him with the ick of a bowling ball wouldn't survive even with the best skills, so he simply gives him all the remaining skills and pushes him down to the new world. He can't believe his eyes when he turns around to see a huge forest surrounding him while he stands there all alone scared. He suddenly spots a pouch on the ground and picks it up to find out that it has unlimited carrying capacity which is a pretty decent item. But even with that everything inside of it is as basic as my girlfriend. He soon does a drip check and tries to check his stats. But suddenly two dices appear on the screen. He tosses them and they turn to M on both. He has no idea what the hell it means but the stats tell him to put all that on a single skill. He wonders whether M means minus or something so he decides to play it safe and gambles it all on the luck stat. To his utter surprise, the M turns out to mean maximum and now his luck stats are turned up to the maximum. He also finds out that since he is such a lonely incel, God has given him a pity ability with which he can tame wild beasts. He looks around to see whether any of his classmates are around, but there is no one in sight so he decides to move forward and make his own house by taking inspiration from the two guys on YouTube that make houses form mud. He starts walking through the forest. When he starts getting weird that some huge monster will peekaboo him, so he takes out another skill item known as the contact lenses. To his surprise, the moment he puts it on he gets the ability to see the stats of different things which is a very important and helpful ability. He realizes that these abilities seem to be much more than what their name implies and happily moves forward as he checks his surroundings to find herbs that can improve his health antivenom mushrooms and much more. Coupled with his endless bag, he can easily collect as much as he wants and sell them as medicine for a huge profit. After rehydrating himself like a true Sigma male, he starts walking through the forests once again where he suddenly finds an opening to a cave. He prays to the god that there are no monsters inside and then enters it to find anything of use. The cave soon turns very dark so he takes out his lantern and magic tent which he can easily set up here and live peacefully. By the time night fell, Haru made himself more comfortable than Bear grills as he collects twigs and with his temperature magic, ignites them on fire which will also keep the beasts away. He checks his stats once again only to find out that a bunch of his skills got leveled up. But he is too tired to check them out so he ends up dozing off. The next morning he wakes up with a jolt and checks the surrounding area to make sure he is still safe and realizes that his monster repelling techniques must have worked perfectly. He starts feeling hungry so he lights another fire and takes out his pan before searing some mushrooms and beef jerky like a true food YouTuber. The food turns out to be pretty good and he wonders whether he can live a life here as a muscled farmer but realizes that he has no protein powder so he goes out of the cave once again where he finds a bunch 
bunch of herbs which can help him gain some muscles. While collecting the herbs, he hears a commotion behind him and finds a bunch of stupid goblins picking up shit from the ground. He immediately gets scared like the massive bitch he is and hides behind some bushes, while the brainless goblins start singing Skibidi Toilet. That's where Haru draws the line and takes out his stick before he can get affected by that brain rot. He wonders whether his wood will be enough to deal with the two goblins, but just to be safe he puts on some protection, and then rushes towards them before hitting one of the goblins on his big fat head. This wakes something up in him as he starts whacking the poor beast like a panada till he gets knocked out cold on the floor. The other goblin gets scared but attacks Haru anyways. Fortunately for Haru, the goblin's attacks are pretty easy to read so he easily dodges the strikes before whacking him on the head and then firing a small magic blast that seals the deal. After that he washes his face as the sun starts setting and decides to head back home as he worked a lot today. After reaching back into his cave, he roasts some mushroom like a total hobo and checks his stats only to find out that multiple abilities have been leveled up. This is a very good news, but at the same time he wonders what will the goblins do with him if they find him in an empty cave all alone. He quickly shakes the terrifying thoughts away and quickly warms up a little with some exercise before heading back to bed. The next morning, he wakes up once again only to find mushrooms for breakfast which is getting annoying already. He wonders whether he can find some meat, but immediately remembers how the vegans of his class would eat him alive if he ever said that. He quickly gets up once again and boosts his stats with some magic before heading out for the day with his trusty wood in his hand. He soon find an item on the ground which again turns out to be a shitty mushroom. He throws it down to the floor and starts searching for meat which grows on trees like a total imbecile. Soon he comes to his senses and decides that he should simply start working on his magic skills and boosts his stats once again. After that he starts running through the forest and to his surprise, his speed has increased several times, as his body feels very light and fast. Moreover, even his attacks seem to be quicker and stronger, so he decides to test this out on a group of goblins nearby. He immediately jumps in the battle and bitch slaps the first goblin with his wood before smacking the second one on the head as well. This seems to enrage the goblins though as the jacked one grabs a club. But Haru hides behind some bushes like a total bitch and sneaks away. He decides that he has had enough for a day and returns back to his cave where he thinks about the things he did that day before he starts working on some DIY projects like creating an IKEA table after several tries. By the next morning though, he has gotten pretty good at it and manages to assemble a stool and a coffee table all on his own. He decides to tighten his security as well now that he knows how to build stuff so he creates a wooden gate at the entrance of his cave to make sure no one can enter without his permission. That night, he goes out to hunt some small game as he can't live without meat any longer. The luck is on his side as he manages to spot a rabbit running away in the forest, and he manages to catch it like a feral cat. He starts smiling like a monster at the thought of the delicious meat when suddenly he feels the presence of other people in the area and gets on alert mode. He looks around and to his surprise and dismay, finds the group of delinquents walking towards him. This really scares him as he doesn't want to get involved with them, so he hides behind some bushes and starts walking away quietly, but his idiot senses start tingling again. He quickly uses his special sight abilities which lets him see everything around him and to his surprise, he spots the class thoughts walking towards him from one side, while the average Sam Sulek enjoyers and the creepy nerds walk from the other side. He decides that he wants nothing to do with them when he suddenly spots the vegan girls led by the class president. He lets the bunny go and wonders whether he should meet with the class president since she has been nice to him and he has known her since first grade, but he stops himself with sheer will as he thinks about how amazing it feels to be his own boss and he decides that he will conquer this world alone. If you liked this video, please subscribe to the channel and watch this next video 